This happened my sophomore year of high school. For context, I'm a freshman in college now. This was around the time the kick was still kind of popular. I typically talked to old friends on there, or my mom when either of us did not have our phone in service. One day, a guy I did not know sent me a message request. The message said, is this Nicole? I had a tendency to give my kick to people so that they did not have my number. So I figured it was someone who I gave my kick to a while ago, and they are just now texting. I traveled a lot for sports and met a lot of people, so this reasoning was entirely possible. I replied yes, and we engaged in small talk. I asked him his name. He told me it was Gerald. If I had met him when I was in a tournament or something, he said yes, and I believed him because why would he lie? He started asking personal questions, like if I had a boyfriend, and if I was a virgin right off the back. I was honest, as I am not one to really lie about those kinds of things. I did not have a boyfriend, and I was not a virgin. I should have saw these as red flags, but I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. He asked me to be his girlfriend, and said he could take care of me and treat me like a real woman. I immediately declined, as I did not even know who this guy was, let alone if I was attracted to him. I told him we could be friends, which was a horrible mistake. As time went on, his text became super obsessive. He convinced himself that I was his girlfriend, even though I never said yes to the many times he would ask me. He became really creepy. He would threaten to come kill me if I did not answer the phone. He photoshopped my face on naked pictures and threatened to leak them on my school accounts and my coaches. He told me that he was watching everywhere I was going, and he knew when I was lying. I was scared, because I had no idea who he was or where he lived. His location changed every time I asked, and his social media pages were created just for the purpose of stalking me. I had to delete all my social media. He even got a hold of my phone number and was calling and texting me frequently. One instance I remember, he made a fake phone number on one of those apps and was trying to talk to me as one other person so he could get more information on me. He even contacted my best friend, saying that he was looking for me in my house and that he was trying to get a hold of me. I was genuinely scared. I did not know what to do. I never opened up to anyone about this until one day I told my older brother about a year after all of this was happening. I had gotten used to the threatening text by this point and just considered it a way of life. When talking to my brother, I told him all that was happening, giving him all the details from the past year. He asked me what the guy's name was, and I said Gerald. He asked if I knew the last name, and I gave it to him, hoping it was a real name. He asked me if I knew what he looked like. I did. I sent him the one picture I had from the beginning of us talking. My brother was livid. It turns out the guy was a friend of my brother's now ex-girlfriend. She did not like me due to the relationship I had with my brother, so she sent one of her friends to basically harass me. For a little context, my brother lives in Georgia, while I at the time lived in Oregon. My brother took care of the problem, and I finally got the money to get a new phone and a new number. My brother also broke up with that girl for pulling a horrible stunt on his family like that. Fast forward to Christmas break, and I went to Georgia. I was with my brother when we decided to stop at Burger King. It had been a few months since I'd interacted with Gerald, and I honestly was not even concerned, even though I was in the same state as him. I got to the cash register and my jaw dropped. Gerald was my cashier. I knew he worked at Burger King, but of all the ones we chose to go to, it was his. He gave me a smirk, as if he was plotting all the ways he could kill me right on the spot. I was frozen. My brother, who had just come out of the bathroom, immediately realized who it was. He grabbed me and pulled me out of that place in a swift move. We never did eat Burger King. In fact, we just went home. I do not know what would have happened or what would have been said if my brother did not come out when he did. It still sickens me to think of that horrible year dealing with him, said Gerald, although I know it will never happen. Let's not meet again. And I was 15, living in New York. 
I was a competitive athlete in high school, the type who got up before school for workouts and trained for long hours after. With recruiting season a year away, I was under tremendous pressure to perform in my sport, as well as in the classroom. I was struggling to keep up in calculus at the time, so my mom suggested I get a tutor. She made an appointment with a teacher friend of hers who really knew his stuff. I've been going to him regularly, probably three times a week for a month before I met Alex. Alex had the tutoring session after mine, and we crossed paths every week. It would never been more than a glance and a smile, as I was incredibly shy and terrified of boys. He was tall and blonde with piercing blue eyes, so naturally, I thought he was cute. One day, my tutor had to change his schedule and decided to book us together as we were learning the same topics in calculus. I was shocked and delighted when Alex started chatting with me afterwards and asked for my phone number. I had never had a boy pay attention to me in that way, and I was flattered that someone that cute wanted my number. Eventually, Alex and I began dating. Alex went to Catholic school in another town, but because he lived in the same town as I did, he took the bus every morning from my school to his. This gave us most mornings together. He was able to meet my friends. I was a little taken aback when they didn't take to him like I did. They mentioned him seeming weird and I got super defensive, but let it go. I realized that I'd been spending less time with them than I normally did, and assumed they were jealous that I had a boyfriend. As time went on, things got more serious. We started experimenting sexually, and eventually I lost my virginity to him in the back of his Ford Escape. That's when things began to change. While Alex and I would talk regularly, he started going over the top about staying in contact with me. He would make me stay on the phone with him all hours of the night, until eventually my mom started taking my phone before I went to sleep. This relationship also started taking a toll on my athletic career. I was too tired to spend extra time training and started skipping practices to see him, driving 30 minutes each way to his school. Eventually, my friend sat me down and told me how unhealthy this relationship had become. I'd isolated myself from them, and my entire free time was spent with him. At this point, I wanted so badly to end the relationship. I had fallen out of love with Alex, and college applications were approaching. I had been scattered by no less than ten colleges, and my plan was to attend Brown, my dream school. Alex's obsession with my relationship had taken a huge toll on his grades and Brown wasn't going to be an option for him. I remember when I told him that was where I was planning on going and he freaked out, saying he would never get in there and begging me not to go. At the time, I was also recruited by the University of Illinois. Alex applied there in hopes that I would ditch Brown and go to Illinois with him. That was the final straw for me. I had things for good with Alex, assuming that would be it. Because Alex would take the bus from my school to his every morning, I still had to see him. I remember walking into school past him and his classmates who took the bus with him. And some of his guy friends yelled slut and whore at me. Apparently he had spread a rumor that I had cheated on him with a bunch of guys and then ended it with him. I ignored it until I started getting Facebook messages from random people at his school. I spent months getting nasty messages from guys at his school accusing me of having STDs and telling me I was going to get gang-banged by his friends. Eventually, I had to delete my Facebook because it wouldn't stop. I think deleting my Facebook was what set off the stalker tendencies for Alex. He wasn't able to see my face online, so he started calling nonstop and sending desperate aim messages telling me he loved me. While this was going on, I was the favorite to win the high school championship in my sport. I'd gone undefeated all season. Alex ended up showing up while I was competing for the championship, and I saw him there. It shook me so badly I ended up losing the title. I was furious and heartbroken. I ended up picking up his call that came that night and screamed at him, telling him to never contact me again. That's when the threats began. I got a call a few nights later from Alex. After he texted me, he had something important to tell me. Stupidly, I answered. He began to tell me how he was going to kill me. He was going to show up at my house when my parents were at work, with a rope and a knife, and make me suffer like I'd done to him. I started to cry, and he eventually went on to say he was going to get me before I got into school, because he knew exactly where I parked every morning, 
and my parents were never going to find me. At this point, I decided to record what was being said and had it taped on my phone. I hung up once I felt he'd said enough. The next morning, I went to school extra early, much earlier than I figured he'd be there. I showed my advisor the recording and then called my mom. I remember feeling a deep rooted shame as my mom listened to the recording. Like I had done something to bring this on myself. My advisor was so alarmed by the recording, he advised me to go to the police. This day still feels surreal to me. My mom and I sat in the police station all day, explaining the story of my relationship with Alex and how it got to this point. The police then drove to his high school and arrested him while he was in class. The topper on the day, though, was when I went out to bring my food back to the police station for my mom and I. I pulled into the station at the same time as the car holding Alex did. I saw him in cuffs, and he indeed looked like he wanted to kill me. Post-arrest, I got a restraining order against Alex, and he was sent to a mental institution for a short while. He ended up breaking the restraining order on more than one occasion. I contacted the police, but I didn't think it was cause to do anything. I think it's important to note that Alex's family was wealthy and had a name in the area, so it wouldn't have surprised me if that's why they brushed it under the rug. I ended up attending Brown and had to inform them of the restraining order and let them know that Alex should not be allowed on campus. It's been over 10 years since this happened, and I still continue to receive friend requests and phone calls from him on occasion. I recently moved across the country from where all this occurred. I finally feel safe now that I'm far from where he lives. But any time I get a block call or a text from a number I don't know, a thought goes through my head that it's him. It's safe to say that this experience has completely changed who I let in my life and who I choose to date. Alex, let's not meet again.